we go. Okay, recording in progress. Hi, how are you? It's uh, it's Monday and it is four o'clock on the East Coast of the United States, one o'clock out in California. And I'm Alex Bennett. And this is the little thing we do called the pop up, which is uh, probably our most popular program that I do. And it's a very simple thing. It's just cut and paste. I just uh, go out and send the signal out through Facebook. In fact, let me make sure it is going out. I'm sure it is. I don't know why it wouldn't be. Uh, let me see here. There we go. That's that. There's that. Okay, it's going out over Facebook. Let me just uh, uh, do a little refreshing here. There we go. And it looks like, yeah, yeah, we got ourselves a show going here. A few people watching it. We get, uh, you know, we get uh, uh, more people watching this than watch the nighttime show. It's funny, the last week I did a thing from the park live on Facebook, and I got over 400 views on that. So who knows why? Anyway, let me, uh, let me, let me bring in our uh, citizen panel. Or I, don't, I don't even like to call it a citizen panel anymore. Boy, a lot of people are waiting. So let's get them all in here. Here we go. Uh, there's uh, Rick Sheckman, uh, always up in that corner, always comes out in that corner. There's my wife. There, uh, her name is Marjorie Miller. Hey, Andrew. Hey. Good to see you, hey. Andrew. And of course, Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. And uh, uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, Len LaFrisco and Mike and Candy Chisholm. And we'll wait and see if some other people show up here. Hello, everybody. How are you? Hey. Good. Hi, Alex. I went out. I'm going to tell everybody just if they're interested. The Amber Heard Johnny Depp trial has just resumed. Oh, <laughs> just resumed. oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> That's the highlight of our our very social week. We started off <laughs> watching John Oliver, and now we're watching Amber and Johnny. <laughs> I haven't yeah. watched one minute. Yeah, no, Johnny. Jenny, there's who? More people, more people <laughs> watching, there's more people watching the death of her trial than are following abortion issues. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But I think there's a good reason. I think there's a good reason for that. People uh, are tired. Number, number one, it's more entertaining than abortion. Uh, but uh, um, more than that, I think the reason why people are is that they're so sick and tired of a world in which people are contentious towards each other and so on. So let's watch two people be contentious towards each other that we don't care about. Well, it would know? have been a better trial if it was an abortion left on the pillow instead of a turd. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. He, she claims it was the dog that did it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I'm with. I went to my. I always wear t-shirts. So like uh, Charlie always wears great t-shirts. What does this one say? It's weird being the same age as old people. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Charlie always has great t-shirts. I he keep does. coming out with these 1939 t-shirts. It just seems to be my thing. Uh, and. Uh, I, so I went in, I said, I'm going to go find some T-shirts that I haven't worn in a long time. And this, uh, you'll know what this is, Rick. PlayTV.com. Oh, yeah. Was that yep. the Texas company you worked for? Oklahoma? Not Texas. No, that was the one up in Sacramento. That was PlayTV oh. where we did the live program every day. Is that where you invented the podcast, Alex? No, no. That was, that was about 10 years earlier than that. Uh, this was uh, this, but this was the first, I would say, video cast. I mean, we did these every day live and we had 12 hours worth of programming on play TV. So, you know, it was a big and then in the back, I think in the back, it's in big letters. It says play TV. But I was uh, I, this shirt is a shirt is 24 years old. Oh. And, and I so want to. Hmm? I want to get a T-shirt, Alex, that says people who read T-shirts are losers. <laughs> <laughs> Look at mine. Love your Love lake. lake. Yeah. Well, that's from uh, up in uh, up in Burlington. Yeah. Well, what's, which lake is that? Which lake is that? I forget. 
<laughs> it's, it's not one of the Great Lakes, right? It is. Oh, it is. Well, it's a piece of it. It's a piece of it. It's, a, it's an inlet. Yeah. From. Tell them what you did last night, Alex. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's a fantastic grabber sentence right there. <laughs> Tell me what you did last night. Well, outside of that amazing sex we had last night. After that. After that. After that. <laughs> We uh, we went to sleep. <laughs> keep going, keep going. And, uh, and we're we're sleeping. About five thirty in the morning. Let me just set that. It's too embarrassing for me to say what happened. All right, let me lay out the picture. It's about oh. five thirty in the morning, and I hear this huge bomb. I thought there was something on top of the the building. It was so loud, and I woke up. Alex had rolled onto the floor. Oh, shit. oh, my granddaughter did that the other day. That's horrible. I've done it a couple of times, but this one just totally woke me up. You know? And I, I injured myself, too. I got a little. Well, you're going to have a black something there. See that? It's like a rug burn. It's okay. not the end of the world. You'll I know it's not the end of the world, but I mean, Nobody's coming is, I, I have None never. None of us have ever done that. I. <laughs> I've never fallen out of bed in my entire life. How many here have fallen out of bed? Sure. Like, Me twice. Really? really? Okay, I don't feel so bad anymore. You but know. at least I didn't make such a loud noise. Because like, Charlie's like a PhD or something. If he rolls out of bed. <laughs> that has know. nothing to do with gravity. <laughs> it has nothing to do. Well, that, your PhD is how you learn that it has nothing to do with gravity. That's <laughs> right. No, I fell out of bed. Personal, and, and it was you rolled and, over. That's what happened. Yeah, and it was, it, and then it, it was painful here for a little bit. This name more, but I mean, it was just I don't know. I just felt so old. Old. You know. Yeah. I mean, I've never fallen out of bed in my life. But you I, could have fallen out of bed when you were thirty. I mean, it's not like it's an old person yeah. problem. Well, why? Why, why did I? Or? I mean, the only time I've fallen out of bed, you know, was when I was having really incredible <laughs> sex and somehow i fell out of bed you know <laughs> but i rolled back we just got back up got on the bed and continued what i was doing you know <laughs> but i've never when i was asleep and you wake up all of a sudden you wake up and you fall on on the floor and that's and a what? really I weird up. feeling I mean, the noise was so loud well alex when you had the sex problem fell out of bed were you glad no one else was in the room <laughs> yeah. Right. Just yeah. asking for a friend. I, I really. Remember. That's great. Yeah. 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 Hey, I gotta. I gotta tell you a story. Yeah. I, I, I was shocked. I, I'm. I'm downsizing. I'm renoing a, a place that we're going to move into, and I went into a big box store talking to someone who worked there, and made the comment that we were what we were going to be doing with the master bedroom. And this scrawny little, I don't know, Gen Z white kid turns to me and he says, you can't say that. Can't say that anymore. That's true. I said, what, what can't I say? He goes, you can't call it the master bedroom. Oh, are you serious? Yeah. What do you call and I, it? And I said, why can't I call it that? Because master refers to why? slavery. Because you, but you have a I, wait a minute. You have, well, a sla you have a slave bedroom, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, but he, and I, I turned to him and I said, not only... Can I say it? I just did, and I'll say it again. But if we follow your rules from here forward, you're not allowed to masturbate. <laughs> and the kid, uh, and the, the kid turned red and started like he was gonna like he'd pick a fight with me. He just turned and walked off, and I could hear him muttering curse words. <laughs> I watched those. I was shocked. I, I was I, shocked. I find I that can't say masturbate. What store was this in? It was a big box. Big box. Like giving him a plug. You know, that uh, one of the places sells home, home improvement. Oh, okay. Cabinets. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not well, giving somebody a plug that, for, for uh, having assholes as customers. There must, that must <laughs> like be, me. There must be candy chism, by the way. I, oh, hi. Hi, candy. <laughs> nice uh, to anyway, uh, 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 what I find kind of upsetting about it is he's working at a store that's trying to get your business. Oh, this wasn't an employee. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh. I'm talking to an employee who, by the way, by the way, was a, was black. And he was shocked at this white kid all upset that they were talking about master bedrooms. 
That's the thing that's crazy. That's the best part of the story. It's usually the whites me. that always complain, though. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. You know, social justice warriors, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 They'll so, have to rename the Masters tournament now. Yeah, well, <laughs> and, the, and and your your car is going to go off the road because you don't have a master cylinder. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, so Shecky is yeah, getting yeah. ready to go on vacation in a couple of weeks. Week after this, right? Yeah, a week from Thursday. And he hopefully he'll be able to call us from his uh, his from, uh, yeah my master suite your master <laughs> suite on on the slave ship he's taking so. <laughs> get you an oar yeah are you getting excited about the trip no hmm. I get anxiety about these trips like. Mm-hmm. Will the person be there when the plane oh, no, the, I, it, it, to pick it, me to the hotel and things like that? Listen to me. Uh, who wrote? Who wrote swimming? To, did swimming to Cambodia? Um, the one remember, that died. The one that died. I can't remember his name. Committed suicide, yeah. actually. Yeah. And I said to him that when I same thing you did that every time I went on a trip I would get this anxiety, you know, about will I make the boat on time? Will I make the ship on time? Is the train going to get? Or is the plane going to leave from Kennedy when it's supposed to? Oh, I was I was all worried when I was in uh, Alberville for the Olympics that I wasn't going to get up in time to make the train to get to Paris to meet my girlfriend to dinner, and and I'm obsessing about this weeks before I'm going there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I mentioned it to him, uh, Spalding Gray, the guy. I mentioned it to him. I said, he, I, he, I said, uh, I, he said, I said, I always do that. And he says, so do I. He said, I, I always obsess about things. And he said, I found out why. And he said, why? Because we're control freaks. Mm. In other words, by asking or, or posing what will go wrong ahead of time, when it does, we're not surprised. So we've got control of the situation. It's, it's a controlling it. thing in you that makes you do that. You don't have to yeah. do it. Yeah, it's like, you know, I know the hotel in Prague. So if God forbid the people aren't there to meet me, to take me there, I'll get a cab. But it's still like that thing of, will the person be there with a the little sign going, you know. Chances are they will be. And, and what you should do is not, but what you're doing is you're planning for the event that it will go wrong and that you now have control over it if it does. Yeah. 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 So it's all, it's a control issue. Uh, Marjorie knows. And and then you have your contingency as to what to do next. Marjorie's gone on trips with me. She knows how I am the day before we go. Oh my God. Oh my God. (laughs) That's why she has gray hair. Just him packing his suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. And there's five times where I'm not going. I'm not going. You know, as it, 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 it can, it can it, but, you know, traveling is kind of a strain. I don't it's think, it's I think once you're there, you're having a good time, but it's getting there and getting home that's the pain in the ass. Yeah. Well, I think I told you I have to take a COVID test to come back to the United States. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When do you take it? How many days before? Within one or two days of the flight home. Yeah. But I have these kicks and you do it where you get onto Zoom and there's what they call a proctor who walks you through it and then sends emails you, you passed or you didn't pass. So they can tell you by the Zoom whether you passed or didn't pass the test. And when they yeah. see that you pass the test, you know, because you put it you in can show it to the airline. You put it in okay, the reagents and everything. They then okay you, and so that's a, that's good for the government and so on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and you'll good. you'll probably pass. And if you don't, you got a couple more days in Europe, you know. Yeah, I have more days in Bucharest. Yes, it's this a special kind of anxiety, more Dracula man. T-shirts. Yeah, dra- yeah, because you're going to Transylvania. Yeah, yeah. Well, we envy you know. we envy you. Marjorie always says to me, "Let's go on vacation." I keep telling her. The, it, it, exactly what I'm what you're telling us all the problems with traveling to Europe at this time the cost which is incredible okay uh the fact is you can afford it but what the hell you know still it's it's uh, it, it, that's a factor for us 
And also the factor is all that about that you have to take the test coming back and that yeah, some, some, country, some countries don't want people coming in. And I mean, it's just, it's, it's a pain in the ass. Yes, uh, uh, Mike. It's a special kind of anxiety, man. Like when we went down to California a few weeks ago, um, we had to take a test before, and it's 24 hours before your flight. Like, so you go to the airport, you take the test, we then walked to the terminal to check in because by the time we had checked in, we would have the results of the test already. But it's a, it's a, I'm, I'm not a hypochondriac or, or, or um, I don't have any uh, uh, anxiety when it comes to that. I've got a host of other problems, but that's never been an issue. But it's like knowing that you've got a beautiful set of dominoes set up, ready to go, but you are not sure if that first domino is going to be removed or not. Because, I mean, okay. there's hotels and all these experiences that are waiting for you once you get stateside. But if something happens that you fail that test, you don't feel bad or anything, but on the way to getting the test, now you're like, oh, do I have a fever? Do I feel bad? Do I? It's a special kind of anxiety. Well, I'm, I'm, I was always, before. I'm always worried about getting a cold. Yeah. You know, or being sick before I go, you know. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it, 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 and, and I have to admit that anxiety is mine. I don't think Marjorie had the same kind of anxiety. She just, she just, her, just her, 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 her nuttiness but is. I live with his. <laughs> no, but your nuttiness is you pack a week ahead of time. Sure, I take my time. You know, I wait till the night before and I throw some stuff in the in the luggage. Well, what I do, I have an open suitcase and I just put things in there. It's not packed. It's just in there. And then when I do the packing, I have everything in there yeah. to pack. But, uh, you know, I would, I, I would love to go take a trip right now to Europe or someplace like that. And I don't Anyways. care if we spend a lot of money doing it, you know, uh, but it's 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 the fact that these days it isn't that easy. You know, like I don't really drive anymore. So before we used to just rent a car and we would just travel all around Europe, you know, or wherever we were going. The problem with that now is the cost of renting a car is incredible and driving. And the yeah. gas, the cost of gas and, you know, all those things that we would have done it, five, five years ago, 10 years ago, just, you know, we did it. We rent a car That's and we drive, you know, yeah. we drive. You know, the so, car uh, rental could be more than your plane ticket at the moment. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. But Plus I mean, the fear, the fear of driving at this age. Yeah. But I mean, I, I drove uh, a lot in Europe and I loved every minute of it. You know, it's terrific. But the rental was cheap for the car and the gas was cheap enough, you know, for the car. And uh, we had, we had a wonderful time, you know, and we play, we, by driving, I find that you can be a little more adventurous. In other words, you find a town you like, and then you stay there. Or yeah. you make a right turn to see what's over there. Yeah. And it, what's over there yeah, is really. It, GPS in its earliest days. We were in Italy and we're driving, following the GPS, and we make a left and a right, and we're following up into a, a private farm. Yeah, <laughs> and that was because home. that's because the UPS told us that was the way to the road. You know, we're at a dead end. But the thing was that we wound up in uh, where was it? Uh, Rio, uh, uh, Mar Margia Margiori. Uh, Cinque Cinque Terra. And, and I'd never heard of this place. And we just saw it as being lovely. So we found ourselves in a, 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 a hotel room there, which was very inexpensive. And but we uh, found out about Cinque Terra through a friend of mine. I don't, you, a friend of yours? Yeah. And then yeah. I had a boss at, at uh, No, Curious. it was a restaurant that, that, that we used to go to all the time. And, and yeah. the owner of the restaurant gave us that name. Yeah, right before you and I went, and then I had a boss at Sirius who went to Cinque Terre and had talked about it. Uh, I suddenly remembered, you know, so we, we you make it into kind of an adventure. It's a little opposite of what Shecky does, where he gets on a boat and they go where they're going to go, and you you then get off and have your little adventures. But uh, yeah, yeah, uh, we we I always like to make my vacation an adventure. I mean, what we did was in China, we did exactly that, you know. You land uh, in a city and you get a room. Of course, we didn't rent a car in China. We we had a driver and a car that the company 
got together for you. That was in Beijing, Alex. In Beijing, and then we got, we got a driver in a car in in yeah down there. And they're travel agents, and they take they take people on tours of areas. And we went up to the the casks in the river Lee the Lee River, yeah. Uh, and uh, but the only trouble with that is you get yourself any travel agent, they'll show you their credentials and everything in 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 uh, China to take you on a tour, and they take you on a tour. But then the last day they're trying to sell you stuff, <laughs> you know, they took us to what this one place that, well, we just had to see. And it was some place where they made something. They wanted us to buy it. And the guy was going to make a percentage or whatever we bought, yeah. you know, uh, Thailand's like that too. Yeah. Most, yeah. most every tourist it, destination. It, it, every tourist destination. I don't think I never found it. I've, I've worked in 120 different countries over the years and most places that do tours, they, have that in Peru. Yeah, when you're you, on a cruise ship you, tour, very often you end up at quote the China shop where they're trying yeah, to sell you yeah. China or yeah. whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even even when they take you to for a meal, they're they're getting paid yeah. at the restaurant. Yeah. It's just normal. That's how. That's why mm -hmm. tours aren't that expensive because they figure you'll spend. Yeah. My last time I was in China, the people I was with wanted to go on a tour, and we stopped at six places. Each one of them was a place to buy stuff. I wish we had uh, uh, um, Mandy here uh, because uh, there's a big election going on in, in Georgia right now. So yeah. Maybe she's out voting. I don't know. How about, did, did you see this strategy for Pennsylvania, the Democrat? was actually promoting to get the, the lunatic. Paid by uh, something Chappelle. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I saw the ad, yeah. That's, talk about risky, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. People were doing that when Trump was running. Yeah, vote for Trump, we can beat him. Yeah. Down, when, down in Kentucky, you got any elections going on down there? No, we had our primaries last uh, Tuesday. Yeah. And the guys that I voted for all got the, all won their elections for oh, the really? primary. Oh, okay. Well, you vote liberal, so it's kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, but there was uh, uh, the guy that is is uh, won the Democratic nomination for this district of the House of Representatives mm -hmm. is current, currently frozen. But, but he, the leader of the minority in the state Senate, and so oh. he's running for Yarmouth. Yarmouth is retiring. Now, is uh, this year is is Mitch McConnell running again? No, oh, Rand. no Rand Paul is, and a, a, a local black man named Charles Booker is going to run against him. Yeah. Uh, you have a lot of enough blacks in your state that it could <clears throat> change that uh, end? You know? In certain areas, uh, 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 the Louisville Jefferson County area for sure uh, yeah. will vote for him, just like the last time somebody went up against McConnell or, or Rand Paul. You know, Jefferson County voted for the Democrat, but, it, you know, it all depends on what happens in the state and well, since the last it's time he ran election. and i don't like to get that much into politics on this show but it's just a curiosity of mine what how well did Rand paul do the last time he ran well it was in 2016 so he came in when trump was elected actually that was his second term he yeah. came in in 2010 with the tea party and then was re-elected in 2016 when trump was on the ballot but this is an off-year election so there's a chance, however slight, that he might lose. Yeah, but not a big one. No, because because I think in the last off-year election, we got uh, um, a, a Republican governor because the turnout was only 31%. Oh, so off-year is the reason there's a difference is because of the, of the lack of turnout? Yeah. It usually, yeah, don't show indicates, up. it usually indicates the lack of turnout when it's an off-year election. It's amazing. I mean, that's you know, how we got. That's how we got my favorite politician, Mr. De Blasio. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know something I got to tell you. It, it, it's also interesting. There are countries in this world that are fighting for the right. I mean, literally giving up their lives mm -hmm. to be able to have a dem uh, democracy in which they get to vote. And here, yeah. you get like forty percent of the population yeah. voting. What's what's the amount? It's very. It's and you go. Come on, you know. They should make it legal that you vote. Legal? You know, I mean, it is no, legal yeah. that you vote. 
You know, no, we play it, <laughs> mean mandatory. mandatory, you mean? Mandatory. Mandatory. Yeah, yeah, yeah mandatory. but then the politicians will not support it because they don't get voted out. Well, in, <laughs> you know, there are countries that have mandatory voting and it's worse. Like, for example, Brazil. Is it really? In, in Brazil, it's mandatory. You you have no access to any social services if you didn't vote. It's illegal Australia to not vote. Australia is not so bad. It's and, mandatory there. Yeah, but what, what happens in a country is the, the politicians then do things to, to pander and buy votes because oh, okay. you have to go um, or, or something happens. So in Brazil, all of a sudden in the, in the poorest neighborhoods, the right wing guys show up with bags of food for everybody for free. And <laughs> the next thing you know, they're people voting against their own financial interests because you're getting free food. Bit, bit free bags of food. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It, it, it's not a, it's not a, a, a good model. The, the beauty is, if, if you look at it, if you don't vote, you're making a choice not to vote, which is a vote. Well, that, that's what I always, always bothered me. I mean, I, I'd like to not vote when there's nobody to vote for. I mean, I don't, I don't believe in voting for the lesser of two evils. I'd like to vote for somebody I really believe in. And there should be a, a specification on, on the ballot where you can just say no vote. And if no that's, vote wins, they have to run that election again. Well, and they do yeah, have, have that. In, they do running. have that. Isn't that what ranked choice voting is all about? What? Yeah. Ranked choice voting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean where you, there's a, there's a first, second, third choice? Right. Yeah, but suppose you don't like any of those people. I mean, I know Shecky well enough to know that the two of us, probably between us, wouldn't vote for anybody ever again. <laughs> you know? Because the people running are so disgusting. Well, I said to you last night on the phone, you know, and we're not in that district. The Blasio thinks he's running for the House of Representatives. He is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah well, he is. Yeah. He is. Yeah. Yeah. But he thinks he's going to get elected. Well, it's it's in a it's in a new district, right? That's just been gerrymandered. It's gerrymandered. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. You know, so I guess he could use the billion dollars his wife stole. To finance it. What do you mean, stall? <laughs> How's mental health doing? Again, we're being too political. How's mental health doing in New York City? Well, my, personally, <laughs> <laughs> well, you put her in charge of it and gave her a billion dollars to solve it. Oh no, there's nothing. They're crazier than ever. They're pushing people into subway trains, and there was a what a shooting yesterday in a subway. Yeah, on a subway. Yeah. We're getting and back to the and she cannot explain where the money went. You know what I like though? Are you it, serious? What no, we're getting no, back to no, is no. is is the way New York used to be. It's yeah. boss tweet. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. The way it was in the seventies. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I first moved here in the seventies. Boy, I'm telling you, you go into a subway, uh, subway, and the train would go by and it was so full of graffiti that it was this blur of color. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, which was kind of nice in its own strange way. I mean, the reason, the reason why I never was bothered particularly by the um, uh, by that um, was the fact that the subways were so ugly and the trains were so ugly that the fact they had graffiti on them made them at least look better. Would you agree, Shecky? You remember how bad the trains looked in those days? How bad the subway looked? You remember yeah, when the, the graffiti subways... looked worse. Do you think so? Do you remember when the subways were green? Yeah. 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 I thought they were still green. <laughs> <laughs> Charlie's had his hand up for a while. Yeah, Charlie? Yeah, I, I, you're talking about not wanting to vote for the lesser of two evils. I yeah. wonder how many of those women have voted for What's her name? Stein. That that because uh, they didn't want to vote for the lesser of two evils. How they feel about letting the greater of two evils win? Now that they're losing all of their reproductive rights. Where is yeah. this? Here it's with Donald Trump in oh, 2016. Three judges he appointed to the Supreme Court that Hillary. Oh, oh yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You think Hillary would have put those clowns in to take away women's rights? No. Yeah, but then the Republicans would have said. Well, you can't nominate someone. You only have four years in office. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah. right. <laughs> only Mitch McConnell says that that kind of crap, unless it serves his interest. Yeah. Well, it does serve his interest. Yeah. Like well, you know, they, they push that woman through 
what was six months left in Trump's term of what? office? It was in the fall. It was Actually, in the fall was, of the election. It year. was only four months. Oh, left. it was two weeks before election. Early yeah. voting had already yeah. started. Over six yeah. million people had already voted. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, but you know, a year be but before that, when it was still Obama, oh no, he can't do that. Oh, he only has a year left because he was lame duck. Wait a minute, are we getting too political here? <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. Hey, I know how to solve it. Did anybody watch Saturday Night Live? No. 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 Yeah, I watched. There was a uh, there was a uh, an ad that started. You know, one of their fake commercials that started talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was it was very I, funny. People being stupid, and it talked about just it did a really good job of for about twenty seconds about showing how people just can be stupid, not with a mental illness, not with anything else, just have a low IQ. And then they flipped it and turned it into a vote commercial, and it was talking about so stupid people stupid, voting. It was yeah, very clever yeah, in how they delivered. I'll show it. it to you, Marjorie. It's, if you're stupid, vote. Vote. Oh, it was so yeah. clever. Yeah, because it didn't start out as a voting commercial, and then it turned into it. That was the gag. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I like the use case. I have a question I want to ask you, Alex. Yes. Back in your days in San Francisco, there was a woman that used to call in and tell you a story, and then at the end she would say, "I'm the cat." You remember this woman? She vaguely. Yeah, I I was talking to my buddy the other night, and he says, "I've never told this to anybody before," but and because he knows who you are or whatever, he used to listen to you every day. It, it was his ex-wife. <laughs> oh really yeah, but she, used to do it, she used to do it because she knew her husband was listening and she would make phony voices and whatever and try to get through to you and talk about some inane bullshit stuff and then at the end she'd go I'm the cat <laughs> <laughs> I vaguely remember that All right, you know, well, but we, we weren't particularly a political show but it wasn't like your typical talk show No, I took some know, calls you know, you know. You took callers, yeah, sure, yeah. Occasionally, when there was nothing else to do. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know where he he told me it the other day, and I was cracking up. It's like really, okay. You know, if I open the lines on a radio show and I got a group of people as tell as intelligent as the group that's here right now, <laughs> I would have made it nothing but a talk show. But the thing is, you open up the lines, there's nothing but stupid people. So I played with them like they were all stupid. Yeah. Alex, what was the name of the show where somebody would call on and you would just immediately jump on them for about six or seven seconds and then click on to the next person? You basically treated that, everybody that was like that. You, that was Houston, Texas. Oh, that was awesome. I loved that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> if, if any kids called, the rule was if any kids called, I would just say too young and hang up on them. <laughs> And every kid in town was listening because they hated me. <laughs> yeah. um, but I was told to do that by my boss. It was Gordon McClendon, who was a very savvy guy when it came to getting audiences. And we had two thirds of the radio audience in Houston every night. Listen to me. Wow. You don't hear about ratings like that anywhere. Mm. And it wasn't my talent that did it. It was the whole setup that the, the, the Gordon McClendon came up with. And he, he basically, he and his uh, program director told me how to do that show and told me, hang up on any kid that calls. Tell them you were also you. very quick. Whenever somebody would start complaining about something or say something, you were quick to jump on them, though, too. Like, it was rapid fire. The footage I heard anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listened to it and I go, I kind of hate that guy. You know, he I, I was the man you love to hate. That was the... Yeah. Or, weren't you that son of a bitch on the radio or something like that somewhere? Well, I was that uh, I was the man you love to hate. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were like a heel pro wrestler. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that set me up immediately for the kind of callers they're going to call me? You know, so it's going to be very argumentative. Uh, but also, I was very much kind of right wing at the time, and then I had a cousin who came to me and said don't you know what's going on in Vietnam? And I didn't really care. You know, I was just, I was just out to have a career. Mm -hmm. And once I became aware of that, I started seeing all the lies and duplicity and so on in government. And my whole show took a turn, you know? And, and uh, after that point, I was like, and then I went to Chicago and I got tear gassed in Lincoln park during the democratic convention. And that completely radicalized me. 
Nothing will radicalize you more than being beaten over the head by a cop or getting tear gassed or whatever. It's like instantaneous in your conversion because this isn't what you signed up for. This wasn't the America you were told you were living in. And all of a sudden you see a bunch of people and they're protesting the war in Vietnam and cops are getting out of, out of, out of vans, beating the crap out of everybody in sight. And you go, well, that's not democracy. That's not what I taught was taught democracy was. And from then on, you're a bomb thrower. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's life. Well, anyway, back to other stuff. Hmm. Yeah. How's everything up in Canada? I, you know, you said something that was kind of interesting, uh, Mike. You said we went down. That's the first. Cal- we, we went down to California. Yes, sir. And I started to think about it, and there's nowhere else but down you could go from Canada. <laughs> you can go down. You can go to Alaska. Canada. You can go up to Alaska. In some yeah, places, that's could, uh, that's you, very true. Most of the go, places. No, no, no. You could in some places in Canada say we're going over to Alaska. Yeah, I think even folks who live in the Yukon say we're going up to Alaska. We're going up to Anchorage, I think. Um, yeah, Alaska's pretty far up there. I've done an Alaskan cruise. It's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. I hear that a lot. You've taken it, right, Shaggy? Is that, oh, yeah. It's the wonderful. Alaskan cruise. Yeah, well, is, I, we took it once. Yeah, everybody's ever taken it. That's what we should do, Marjorie. Right. Everybody that's ever taken it has said that is the most spectacular cruise they've or, or even vacation they've ever had. What's the best time of the year to go see that? When July, it's warm. August. July, yeah. August. <laughs> May or September. July. May or September. May or September. Yeah. I don't know about anybody else's experience, but I was told I went in July and I was told that if you go in July, typically the three days, like it's a seven day deal, but the three days where you're up in the, where the glaciers are and all that, you'll mm-hmm. typically get one really nice sunny day. If you yeah. do it in July or August where you're literally sunbathing in uh in, in 80 90 degree weather and you're looking over and seeing glaciers breaking and fall like yeah. it's it's surreal um so yeah I, I did it in july but i've heard the fall is really nice too is it a particularly expensive trip no no you can get very good deals on it oh. yeah. really well, maybe we should think about that marjorie that's, that's you know that's that. a, 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 we're gonna do you know i mean i'm I've never been one for cruises, but I've been told by everybody, if you ever do a cruise, that's the one to do. Yeah, and you can fly to San Francisco, Seattle, Vancouver, you know, whichever city you want to start from. Yeah. Okay, yeah. If you guys go out of Vancouver, let me know. Kenny, I'll join you. You're up in Vancouver? No. Well, I'm Vancouver. I'm like 200 miles east of Vancouver. So where, where where are you exactly? Kelowna, it's called. Okay. I'm in the Okanagan Valley, which is like yeah. the Lake Tahoe of Canada. It's a very, very nice part to live. Uh, yeah. country. I used to know very a woman. So. I used to know a woman named Jerry from Kelowna. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy. I don't think that was a woman. Talk, talk about jokes nobody can get. I got <laughs> it. Got it. <laughs> um, uh, Greetings, Kate. Wait, wait, wait a minute. So wait, wait, Vancouver is right up near Seattle, right? Yeah, yeah. It's yes. So really, you, miles. You, you really did go down to California because you were, you know. I've been going down to the States since I was a little kid. Like, because no, we we're used, about we two hours away from Washington border. Not we, even two hours, an hour and a half. We used to have a guy on on uh, Gabnet who did a show from Revelstoke, British Columbia. Yeah, Klondike Bill. Mm-hmm. Klondike, no, <laughs> Revel- Jim. Klondike Jim. Huh? Revelstoke Jim. Where is Revelstoke anywhere near you? Yeah, it's about 90, uh, another 90 minutes away. I've got clients who live in Revelstoke. Really? Yeah. Really? Is it, how nice a town is it not? Uh, so it's small, uh, but the skiing is world-class in Revelstoke. Phenomenal skiing. So people there. go there for, for skiing. Yeah, like hella skiing and things like that. Some real extreme stuff as well as, uh, like the population triples in the winter. It's, uh, oh. uh, and it's, and it's the last town going through the Rockies to go to Alberta. It's mm-hmm. the last town before you go through there. So it's got a lot of um, tourist type stuff and travel type stuff. Travel type stuff. Yeah. That's good. It's good. Always nice to go out there. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, God's country. Yeah. But I remember when we first did, uh, when we first did um, uh, 
Gab play TV. We had Revel Stoke Jim on play TV and we had him doing his TV show from Canada, uh, Canada, but the, the, the throughput and everything was so bad that it was like, you saw every other, every third frame and his picture was this big. All right. <laughs> By the time we wound up doing Gabnet, it was a full size picture. You know, I mean, it, it's amazing how we've come along in technology. So listen, I, I let me bring this up. So I, I've been living with this thought recently about, okay, we've got like the iPhone, okay? A wondrous little object. I think maybe this has done more to, uh, uh, to change our society than any other single item in our time. Would you all agree with that? Yeah. yeah. You know, it really has. Uh, I would say electricity. Well, no, it, it, electricity turned on the lights, but this, this changed communication, it changed socialization, changed a lot of things. If you think about what the iPhone in and of itself did, it's amazing, just amazing. Well, the last phone booth in the New York City is being removed this week. Where really? is it? Where is Holy it? smokes, where is it? I don't know. This is in the paper this morning. What is Superman going to do? <laughs> yeah. That's why the oh, crime no, is so high. Phone, that was a not a phone booth. That was a what do you call that those? One of those little stands. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> you just answered the question of the high crime in New York. There's no place for Superman to change. Right. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But anyway, so I was thinking about this, and I'm thinking, here's this iPhone that invented was invented about 15 years ago, I guess. Am I right? Right, 15. Yeah, seven, I think. Yeah. All right. Yeah, but there was cell why, phones. Why, was, that. why wasn't it invented in 1700? I mean, were we are we were we so stupid that we couldn't come up with ideas like this? That we couldn't come up with electricity? Well, but world? don't you need cell towers and don't you need satellites? Yes, but why didn't we come them? up with all of that in 1700? Learning, learning's a progression. Learning Micro is a progression. Yes, it is. Learning's. I mean, Marjorie said, "Well, it's evolution." I don't think it's evolution. No, I don't think miniaturization. I, I, I didn't say evolution. I said, but one issue then builds upon the next and the next. Well, you gotta have electricity yeah. before Jeff, you have. Yeah, you yeah. gotta have batteries. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. You have I mean, Jeff, Jeff has his hand yeah. up. Yes, Jeff. Yeah, yeah. I th I think you have to look like there's a several things that became very important. Okay, one was the telephone system. Okay, you got to communicate to people all over the world. You can call your old cousin, whatever, and your, your ex-wife. But you whatever. remember in those days, you really couldn't because it cost too much to call, call your friend in Europe. Yes, yeah. that's true. But, but it, at least the concept was there that yeah. communication was a valuable thing. And when you were in business, man, you, were, you would call a customer wherever the hell they were. Right. Yeah, but you had to make but, sure you they had a phone and that they were near their phone to get to. Uh, this is uh, this know, is this is a communication device. Oh, I know, but you but carry next, everywhere. The next thing was when was the first time? And, and Alex, I think you're probably one of the early ones. Who is it? You know, when did you guys first get your own computer at home? Mine was uh, nineteen. Um, what, what was it? 19, when, I'm trying to remember when I, when I, when I moved back to San Francisco, Shecky, 1980? 1980. Yeah. So I think I got my first computer about 1983. I remember I because our, my business manager and I bought along with one other person, we got a deal on three IBMs, 2000 bucks a piece, maybe. And th these were things with two floppy disk drives in them you know yeah. five yeah. and a half inch floppy disk drives and that was when i got my first computer and i was well ahead of anybody else i knew did you jump actually, on the telnet right away actually i gotta tell you i had a computer earlier than that because what i had was an atari 800 yeah. which was oh, actually yeah. a full-size computer but it only had 40 40 characters across the screen mm -hmm. <laughs> i had a trs 80 and yeah, seventy nine or eighty. Well, I mean, I was in there. I was in there pretty early. Yes, uh, uh, I had an Apple, like when they first came out. Yeah, Mister Nunn. 
Contrary to popular belief, IBM did not invent the personal computer. It was Tandy. Yep. Mm -hmm. TRS-80 TRS was the yep. first yep. widely produced yep. personal computer. Was that before oh. Apple? <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it was. It was yeah. Apple Apple was a few years later. It was also the Amiga that came out of Well, the Amiga. Yeah, the I, I, li I lived the I think the Amiga was maybe the best computer created. It was incredible. Yeah. It was an incredible. Was ahead of all the other ones. Well, I had a Commodore VIC-20. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but the reason why the Amiga was so incredible is uh, and the reason I had one was because they had what was called NTSC output which was television as an output. Yep. And therefore, the company I worked for, which was playing, well, not playing corporate, but before that, New Tech. New Tech oh, came yeah. out with the what they called the video toaster. And this was a card you put in the Amiga. It made it into a television studio. Yep. Mm -hmm. It was an amazing, it was an amazing computer, well before its time, created by a lot of people who left Apple. To go over and and create the the Amiga. I remember when my a school that I was going to bought Apple IIe computers and taught everybody how to use Magic Window for word process. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why well, well, yeah, Apple computer? I had to get rid of because there was a, a software program uh, called Auto Auto Tech or whatever that you could really use to design and engineer products uh and they yeah took, what was it apple uh well so apple took it <laughs> off the market hmm. it was too much business too much business well the thing it. was that with apple i remember the first apple computer i ever played with was al goldstein when i was at screw magazine during doing midnight blue he used to buy all these gadgets and what he bought was the original apple II. You know, the Apple One was in a wooden box. I mean, that was, yeah. you know, but he mm -hmm. bought an Apple II and I played with it. But the problem was you really had to know computers in order to work it. You know, mm -hmm. there weren't a lot of programs that you could plug yeah, into. That's it. the problem. And 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 but I remember that was the first computer literally that I ever I ever played with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the first one I ever played with didn't have a keyboard or a or a screen. You punched little cards. You put a whole oh, stack of cards uh, in the machine oh, that would right, suck them in. Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of work to find out well, what's so, four plus But I go four back is. to why why did we wait until now to invent this? Man was not stupid. No, but yeah, it's it's a, build. They yeah, didn't have the know how. I read an article <laughs> about this not too long ago. Well, it was a few years ago now, actually. I think about it. It, was, it might have been in time where it was talking about the sum of human knowledge and how it used to take like four thousand years for the sum of human knowledge to double. And it's gone faster and faster and faster. Now it's apparently doubling every 18 months. Wow. Mm -hmm. So you had to have the space program before you could have a cell phone. And then and then we had yeah. Trump. Yeah. And we had Trump to well, show here, us that the evolution is real too. Here's a good example. What you know, when I was a kid and we went to the moon, uh, I felt, oh, this is the beginning. Next we go to Mars, we'll be there in another 10 years, and then we'll be out. You know, and no. Yeah. No, we went to we went to the moon. We did it about what five six times, and then we didn't go back there anymore. And uh, it, it's interesting. I wrote a story years ago about uh, some people going to the moon and a big trip to the moon. And they get to the moon, they get there, and they find an American flag. And the whole premise of it was is that the, the United States went to the moon and then they never went back. Why? Mm. Really, that's a perfect case of us succeeding at something and then allowing ourselves to fail at it because we just never went back to there. Now, we, now I, I'm, I was watching uh, these Falcon uh, rockets go up, the mm. things that Musk has been sending up. And I look at them and I go, compare that to the Saturn. It's so much smaller. It's so much sleeker. It has as much power okay uh and 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 it took us how many years to finally get around to the point where actually space travel is getting rather inexpensive and we can actually do something with it but did it did we need that time off or should we have been going after it back then would we have been able to come out with the smaller rocket i don't know but we it's all about the money yeah, so, so, I guess it's all about the money, but boy, I mean, 
Uh, oh, it's it. I mean, it's he, often a demand. Literally, yeah. between between Musk and to a lesser extent Boeing, you're sending fucking rockets up every other day. You know. Now I know this is we now bring bring Checky into this, in which he says, "I can't stand Elon Musk." <laughs> you know. Are you there, Shecky? Oh yeah, I'm not getting involved. <laughs> <laughs> we I've it. always been curious, like when it comes to technology and then applied technology, like yeah. you hear about companies like or organizations like DARPA, how they've had GPS since you know the late 80s, early 90s kind of a thing, and then eventually it kind of makes its way down there. And I always am try and imagine what DARPA has and what they're doing right now behind the scenes that won't make it. For, to us for another 5, 10, 15 years and, and, and how much is actually there that we don't as a general populace know about when it comes to technology? Well, you know, I mean, technology is uh, it, 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 what's happening with technology is it's getting to be terribly important, you know, uh, because I mean, we have a lot of problems we got to solve in this planet. And I don't think we're going to solve them with anything else but technology. But on the other hand, I can't say, you know, I told you, we, I mentioned a while ago, this was made maybe the greatest single invention of my time. Okay. But look what we've done with it. You know, it's, it's one thing to invent something marvelous and magical. It's quite something else of how we apply it. And it's been, and look how it's ruined elections and look how it's, it's ruined the socialization of, of um, the social structure of America has fallen apart because of this. Strange, very strange. It's also affecting human biology. Uh, they're saying that my great grandchildren are going to have an extra finger now because of the swiping motion. And it's actually affecting us uh, that way. So that's crazy. Wow. <laughs> Well, I don't think you're going to get an extra finger that fast, you know. Um, yeah, anytime, Mike, I'll give you the finger. It yeah, took, it, I get that a lot. I mean, how long did it take, <laughs> take take for us to get rid of our prehensile tail, you know? so We were supposed I mean, to get rid of that? Speak for yourself. <laughs> some, people, some people still have a prehensile tail. They still have a little stub. Everybody has it. At the bottom That's of the spine. No. Well, no, no, we got to hear about your little stub. He feels a bone. <laughs> Uh, well, there's a bone down there, but right, what are you saying, right. Jeff? Jeff was trying to say something. His mic is your mic isn't on. Turn your mic on. Yeah, <laughs> I had on. a little competition on yeah. on the house. Yeah. Uh, as far as uh, the technology that really changed a lot for me personally mm -hmm. was I started working on on surgical staples, which everybody goes, well, is that really that important? It was a huge change in reducing the time and the complexity of doing surgery. Wow! And 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 it really then created what it, what we call catheterization. So in other words, you could make a small hole, stick huh? something in a tube with a couple of small little clips and this and that, and you could do surgery and and you're out of there. In like 10, set, 10 minutes. Yeah. And, yeah. and then the patient. Did, did you ever think about home. this? And I'm just, I'm just, yeah. I'm just putting something out there. Did you ever think when you were inventing the, the uh, 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 surgical stapler that a paper clip might be better? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, they were, they were very much somewhat the same. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you where the surgical stapler really came from was was uh, the other country that we don't talk to anymore, Russia. Yeah. Oh, God, I thought you were going to say it's Canada. Uh, no. <laughs> Russia. And they had this product, but they were not really selling it or anything. And some character in New York, I happen to know the guy, he, he looked at it and he goes, this is great. And he made a, a deal with to buy it. And he bought them. They didn't really work very well or anything like that. And then we just kind of yeah, made went, it work perfectly. You went and improved on it. Yeah. 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 Worked great for me. Yeah, there you go. Oh, did I, you? 
I've used a hundred of them. Yeah. You've had, the, you've had the surgical stapler used on you, Charlie? Yeah. When, when I had, had my gallbladder removed, uh, that was 1986, they had they made the seven inch incision to get in there to get my, I still have a scar and they use staples to keep it closed. Wow. Wow. Today they they do that whole thing just uh, uh, yep. laparoscopic. You, you do a Friday, you're back at work on Monday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Things we can do. That's amazing. That's amazing. Uh, but, uh, you know, so whatever, whatever. So um, any anything floating your boat, Jackie, that we should know about? Not really. Anything you're watching that you've enjoyed? Well, I like Barry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I liked, um, what's his name, Cooking in Italy, which I think ended last night. Oh, uh, uh, oh! You mean uh, what's his name? Yeah, uh, yeah. What's his name? <laughs> yeah, we should Family watch Tucci. that. Stanley Tucci. Tucci. Stanley Tucci. Tucci. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, you know. I mean, I have said this. I, uh, I absolutely abhor Jay Leno. I, I can't stand him. In yes, but you like his car show. No, on YouTube, he's got these things called Jay Leno's Garage, in which he shows you some car that's like an old car and discusses yeah. it and the history of it. And he's very good at that. He is. He's, he's yep. very good. Yeah. And he's got a whole bunch of cars. Oh, no. Yeah. He owns, but the, but it, he it, also brings in other people's cars. He was showing yeah. some Russian car that the KGB used. <laughs> he said, I didn't even have to fix this thing up because it was built like a tank, <laughs> you know? And he said, but they're, they're also terrible cars because they get very bad mileage and so on and so forth. But he goes through the cars, you know, and he had some Duesenberg, you know, and a, a Cord and things like that. And you can go, this guy really knows his cars. You know, he doesn't, yeah. know, he doesn't know. Better his, than his comedy. Well, I was going to say better <laughs> than television, you know, but I mean, he really knows his cars. Oh, listen, Jay Leno at one time. Was a Best stand up movie. in the world. Best indeed. stand up I ever saw. And then he just got terrible. He got mediocre because mm. he, he, he got lazy, is what I No, he was the he kind turned of into guy. pop music. He was the really? kind of guy. He was the kind of guy that would settle for mediocre and be happy as long as it was making yes. him money. Yes. You know, pop music. My problem with my career is I would never stand for mediocre. And so I didn't get rich, you know, because if I had been mediocre enough, I would have been a big star. You know, yeah. I'm going to do the uh, Groucho Marx show. Okay, Jay. Have yes, nice right. right. You know. Oh, boy, that is so bad. Didn't they try that once before, though? A couple of times. Once with Buddy Hackett and once with Bill Cosby. And Richard oh, Dawson yeah. tried it, too. Oh, yeah, what, uh, who? Uh, that show was a f show that was created yeah. for Groucho Marx. And yeah, it's his him doing half an hour because they would tape for over an hour the groucho mark show and then cut it down to what worked and the game show was not really that important really to the show the game was like the toy in a package of cracker jacks <laughs> mm -hmm. you know it's been very nice talking to you now it's time to play you bet your life okay groucho. <laughs> and they ask you four questions quickly and you walk away with a hundred dollars and who's buried in grant's tomb yeah yeah <laughs> Well, it was all about being on TV in the 1950s. Nobody was ever on TV, so it was their first shot to, to get that. But, but that show was created. It was done on radio originally. Yeah, uh, and, in 48, 49. And it was created as a showcase for Groucho Marx's talent. Yeah. And not, you know, other than that, if you try to do You Bet Your Life, it's not a very interesting idea for a show. No. Especially well, Groucho was, was funny. A Groucho was very funny. No, no, I've never seen the Jay Leno version, but doesn't he do jaywalking in it or something BS like that? I, I don't know. I never watch it either. So I've never seen it. So I think I, I tried to watch it once and got five minutes into it and said, "This is uh, life's too short, you know? Um, so that, that's a reason I've avoided that. But Jay you, Leno... You mean the car right? show? Pretty good. What? The car show that he did? Well, he did a car show, and I wasn't that interested. He in still that. does it, I think. He still yeah. does it, but this yeah. was something he did. Uh, he came up with during COVID when he really couldn't do that show, and it was just him in oh. his garage with these cars. Yeah, and it's really very good. 
I, I love his car stuff, but I'm interested in cars. That's yeah, but I mean, he knows his cars. He de yeah. definitely oh, knows yeah. his cars. Doesn't know his comedy. Doesn't know his television. I don't know how he lasted on the Tonight Show for that many years, but I can't understand why Jimmy Fallon is lasting that many. Hey, years. he got rated. Leno got ratings. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It's pop music. Pop yep. music does well. Top forty does well. And That's who's what they who's do. number one now in that late slot? I think it's Colbert, isn't it? Still Colbert, I believe. I think it's Colbert. I yeah. think. Why I can't understand. I can't watch five minutes of that show. You know. Speaking of which, has anybody watched uh, Letterman's new season? That was my weekend. I watched all of it this week. I know Shecky's been watching it. it yeah, was all right. it's good. You know, it's like Alex said to me, he's got Billie Eilish on. I said, never heard her music, never will, but she was interesting. Yeah. You yeah. should watch it, Alex. Well, I I kept saying we should watch it, and you said, now nah, we got other stuff to watch. Well, we do have other stuff, but I'll watch it. Yeah, I, I find they're all worth watching because he comes in with a curiosity that even if you don't know who the subject is, the curiosity of his uh, point of view makes the subject interesting and you actually learn something. Like, I'm not a big basketball guy, it, it's but I love the Kevin Durant episode. We're running. I, a, I got three running. minutes of it and turned it off. We're running a little bit over time. But mm. the fact is that when um, when Letterman was on initially years ago with the you know, the show over at NBC during the first couple of years. He was a terrible interviewer. Horrible, horrible yeah. interviewer. Oh, yeah, he evolved. Yeah, and he evolved into a very good interviewer. Yep. But also, when you watch this show where he starts talking about things with some of these guests, he's actually preparing for an hour interview where on the even late show, well, I got to talk to this bimbo for six minutes. Yeah, fine. I'll just go out. And... I'll look at the questions on the card. Yeah. You know, so you've been to, have you ever been to Australia? Well, but that's I'll, not what this I, is. I'll, this I'll tell is you like... what, I think he's, he finally learned what I learned years ago, and it, it changed the way I interviewed people, is that you don't do an interview, you hold a conversation. Mm -hmm. And that way, all nothing but good stuff will come out if you hold a conversation. Right. But if you're there doing an interview, you're trying to figure out what the next question is going to be. And that was the early Letterman. Oh, yeah. He was horrible back in the day. Yeah. yeah. Just terrible. Hey, listen. Great, com great comedy from Merrill and those people. Oh, but, yeah. You know. yeah. Anyway, that's it. We've run out of time here. Gosh, yeah, I got to run. Yeah, I know you got to run. You got to go. <laughs> you got to go invent another staple. Yeah, yeah, something. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Rick, for joining us tonight. Today, rather. Today. Today. What, what day is it? I don't know anymore. You want to ask a Yeah. The sun is still out. It's still no, out. not yet. Uh, uh, Andrew Deutsch, thank you. Always wonderful right. seeing you here, Andrew. Your Thanks. wit is beyond compare. Uh, Charlie Wallace, thank you. Always a pleasure. Len LaFrisco, love having you here, and you're always here, and we appreciate that. Uh, Mike and Candy Chisholm, because Candy was on for a second. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Nunn, thank you. Um, Vernon, and uh, let's see here. Jeffrey Stein, always a pleasure. And always nice to have you here, and you always, you're always here, and that's what I really appreciate. And Marjorie Miller, what can Marjorie. I say? She's the one who hears me fall out of bed. Oh my God. <laughs> and finally, we finish off the program with Edward Berger, who signs it off by saying, that's all, folks. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody give a wave goodbye, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. I think so.